So in addition to neurons, we have a great number of glial cells. And, you know, for a very long time, glial cells or, you know, support cells, right, um, were assumed to be, you know, in uh, vastly greater numbers in the nervous system than neurons. In fact, um, in uh, uh, many introductory textbooks for many years, it was a ratio given of about 10 to 1 glia versus neurons. And that actually was a throwaway line, it turns out, at a Society for Neuroscience conference by uh, a, neuro a neuroscientist who had a lot of respect, who said, oh, I think there's about 10 to 1 in the brain. But it wasn't backed up by any actual evidence. So um, subsequently, people started looking at different tissues in the brain, and they find that actually uh, the ratio between glia and neurons will vary, you know, depending on what area of the brain you're looking at. Um, but in general, it's about at most three or four to one, two to one in some cases, one to one in other cases. So now we think overall in the nervous system, it's probably about two or three to one, uh, you know, glia to neurons. It's not the 10 to one anymore at all. And glial cells are remarkable cells. Um, there are some materials here on this um, uh, course website that I'd like you to pay attention to and to sort of go over. Uh, there's a lot of interest in exploring the uh, contributions of glial cells. Um, we talk about glial cells, um, you know, they're so numerous. So if they're participating in any way, shape, or form in actually information processing in the brain, and clearly it turns out that they are, um, then they, they play a much bigger role than, you know, we, we used to assume. Uh, and a lot of research funding is now ha heading in the direction of actually trying to illuminate what the contributions of glial cells actually happen to be. Uh, we can talk about macroglia, macro meaning large, right? And macroglia include astrocytes, which are really critical glial cells, which wrap their phospholipid bilayers around points of synaptic connection where the, you know, um, uh, axon terminal of one neuron, you know, meets up with the, let's say, dendritic spine of the next neuron. It helps to wrap it and helps to uh, maintain the integrity of point-to-point -point chemical communication so that the release of neurotransmitter from the axon terminal doesn't just go everywhere, Elizabeth, some kind of a hormone or something, but it, it goes and, and, and is in a more confined space so it can, it can activate receptors or influence receptors on the postsynaptic membrane directly across the synapse. Um, astrocytes also take some of their star-like phospholipid bilayer projections and wrap around capillaries that are coming through the region and they, they they express receptors for the neurotransmitter that's being released at the synapse and they can um, link up a detection of how much activity right and they can do this via you know the receptors like if they're metabotropic receptors they can you know uh, increase the number of g proteins internally which can set off you know biochemical cascades to a greater extent and that leads to the release of factors from these other portions of the astrocytic membrane that surround the actual capillaries through the region that promotes the expansion of those capillaries into this particular part of the brain. And that's significant because the astrocytes are listening to the level of synaptic activity that's occurring at a particular synapse and coupling that detection to the delivery of nutrients and, and oxygen, you know, and um, glucose and, you know, um, uh, substances that are necessary to um, uh, support enhanced activity of the brain. We're going to see that that, that kind of astrocytic, um, you know, detection and coupling to blood flow is the basis for a lot of um, neuroimaging techniques that, that rely on changes in blood flow uh, when an area of the brain is more extensively utilized or engaged by a particular task, right? So astrocytes are really critical um, form of macroglia or large glial cell that's found in the in the brain. Um, there's also what we call the myelinating glia. Uh, the myelinating glia, which in the central nervous system we have oligodendrocytes, and in the peripheral nervous system we have Schwann cells, are another form of macroglia, and they, they're essential for um, wrapping segments of um, axon in phospholipid bilayer, their own phospholipid bilayer. And this phospholipid bilayer actually uh, also includes glial-derived proteins. So there are genes that are expressed in the glial cells that actually, in the glial cells would be over here, right, which are wrapping their membrane around here. But there's also what they call myelin-associated proteins in demyelinating disorders, like um, autoimmune disorders like uh, multiple sclerosis. Um, the proteins that are embedded in the myelin provided by the oligodendrocytes in the 
uh, central nervous system or the Schwann cells in the periphery become the target for immune attack. And that leads to inflammation and retraction of the myelin and ultimately some damage potentially to the neuron itself. So um, the uh, myelin-associated proteins are rather important, but myelin is actually just the wrapping of the glial membrane you know, around the axon, and that has the effect of speeding up the rate of transmission of the current uh, of action potentials um, along the myelinated segments of the neuron. Um, so the myelinating glia and the astrocytes are the, the macroglia, but that's in contrast to what we call the microglia. And microglia are really interesting. They're, first of all, smaller. They're micro. They're also significantly mobile. So you should imagine there's like these spider-like cells that are, you know, working their way around your brain at all times and reaching out and touching individual synapses and they're sensing something uh, important about those synapses and about the activity of those synapses and they actually appear to have the ability to initiate processes that degrade or remove or dissolve synapses. Uh, they may be essential to maintaining the integrity of specific synapses. Um, you know they're considered to be part of the immune response in the brain. They're uh, unlike the macroglia, which are derived from the ectodermal layer of the developing embryo. They are actually derived from another developing embryonic layer called the mesoderm, from which you get other uh, immune system cells in the rest of your body derived from as well. Um, so the microglia are really fascinating, and uh, we'll talk more about the microglia um, in class.